seems like everyone and their mother is on Notion these days, right? Like every time I go onto YouTube, there's a dozen more videos, all with the title like, how I organize my entire life with Notion. Well, as I'm sure you can tell from the title of this video, this is another one of those. Honestly, if you're anything like me, who can never resist clicking on those videos because I love watching other people organize their lives, then this one's gonna be really fun for you. Plus, I actually did get two whole requests for this video. One from my friend Rosie, hi Rosie, and one from me, because I love Notion. So in this video, I'm not gonna walk you through how to do anything in Notion. There are tons of other videos here on YouTube, some created by Notion itself, that will walk you through the basic commands and capabilities of it. Those videos would do a lot better job of explaining it than I would. Instead, I'm gonna be showing you how I set up Notion for myself. Let me just also mention that I have a lot on Notion. Like a lot. Like this is not one of those videos where the person goes, oh yeah, I've been using Notion for everything and they've been on it for like a month and they have like four pages. That's not me. <laughs> I've been using Notion since late 2018, early 2019 at the very latest. So I have like two years worth of stuff on here. I also wanna mention that of course, all aspects of these databases are constantly changing. This is really a living database for me. So it adapts to my needs, my occasional flashes of brilliance, it's also not in a cohesive, super aesthetic layout. I mean, this basically reflects my mind. So it's chaotic and unfinished and color-coded. <laughs> All right, let's jump in. So of course, we're gonna start off on my homepage. I've called it Meg HQ because my name is Megan and this is the headquarters of Getting Shit Done. The picture up at the top of the page, this fun mishmash of cats, is something I found on Facebook somewhere. I'm not totally sure where, to be honest, so if anyone knows, please tell me so I can credit them. The icon picture here is something I pulled from Tumblr? Again, I don't remember, so same deal for that image. In terms of the page layout, I've created five subheadings here, and then I have various pages underneath them. Those subheadings are personal, career, color-coded chaos, aka where you are right now on YouTube, financial, and long-term. I've also got a section up near the top here for packages that I'm waiting on. The top three are highlighted because there's been shipping issues I've been made aware of with those. In a perfect world, I'd be on top of things and would be handling that, but instead I'm here with you, so. I also have a quote a bit further down. The best preparation for good work tomorrow is to do good work today. I try to have a quote about productivity somewhere on my homepage to remind me that's something I find important, and I try to cycle through different quotes so I don't get so used to seeing them that I block them out. This one has been up for at least two months though, so it's time for a new one soon. At the very top of this homepage, I also have an inbox. This is not a concept I came up with by any means, and to be honest, it's also not something I've been using recently. I think you can tell from the fact that this was last emptied in April of last year. The idea behind it is that your inbox is your capture point for any stray thoughts, to-dos, whatever. You can access it quickly. I used to have a shortcut on my phone to open up this inbox, and then you can just jot down whatever came to mind. Later, you can go through and quickly sort all those stray thoughts and inputs into the categories where they belong. I end up not using this because I know myself well enough to know that I will end up not going through that inbox, so it'll be a graveyard. Instead, I've just trained myself to capture anything in the area it belongs. It takes a marginal amount of additional time, but I never have to go through an inbox. My most accessed page in all of Notion has to be this one, my running to-do list. The title of this confuses some people. I don't mean runs I want to go on, because let's face it, I absolutely never want to go on a run. Instead, it's just a list that consistently gets updated, so it's running as in continuing in time. I have this page set up in a Kanban layout, which makes the most sense to my brain for this type of database. It's really gratifying to drag something over to the completed category, although it doesn't feel quite as good as checking it off in my planner. I've set up a high priority column on the far left side, so it's the first thing I see when I come into this page. This is all the stuff that I really need to handle, like auto-renewing subscriptions that I need to cancel before they charge me, 
or just the most important next actions for me to take in some project. Recently, I've been updating some characteristics of this board, trying to corral things into their respective projects, assigning them an urgency, and then adding tags that tell me whether I need my computer, or if it's an errand, or if I need to be on the phone in order to do that task. The idea is that I'd filter down to the tasks that match my current situation. For instance, if I'm gonna be on an airplane and I'll have a bunch of free time and my laptop, but no internet, then what can I work on to be productive? Sadly, I never end up filtering in this way because I firmly believe that flights are for catching up on trashy TV shows, movies you missed out on, and the maximum amount of free snacks and beverages you can coax into your body. But I still believe the tags are a good idea. Maybe someday they'll also be useful. I also use my books page a lot. In here, I have this initial table which has all the book recommendations I've gotten from friends, family, and the internet. As you can see, it's a lot of frickin' books. When I'm at a bookstore and overwhelmed by the selection, I can whip out this list on my phone to narrow my focus. This one also has some tags, but in this case, it's genre. I only started adding these tags in the last year or so though, so it's certainly not complete. But the idea is that I could go, hmm, I'm in the mood for a biography, and then could filter by that tag. This gives me a much more manageable list of books to look at. When I get this fully set up so that everything is tagged, it's gonna be awesome. In the same page, I also have a couple more databases. Right after my to read list, I also have my books read archive. I've only been tracking all the titles I read in a year since 2019, so it's definitely not that impressive yet. This has helped me to remember the books I've enjoyed, or not enjoyed, and make good recommendations to friends. I also started adding quotes that I pulled into the Notion pages of that book. I also sometimes wrote why I liked or didn't like a book, which was really just for fun. Next up back on the books page is my other Goodreads page. This was something I started last year when I was wanting to refer back to articles that I'd read. I created this simple database with just the title of the article, a link to it, some tags, and the date it was read. It's come in handy when I'm talking to someone about a concept and say, I just read a great article about this the other day, because then I can find that and send it to them. It's like a real life way of citing your sources. Another cool thing is that if you're on a web page for an article on an Apple device, you can use the little share button to send that page directly to Notion. It's like a little web clipper and it'll just file that in here for you. Plus it pulls the body text of the article so you can highlight stuff, add in your own thoughts, whatever you want. I actually have a ton of books that I've purchased and haven't yet read. In my defense, I did spend the last four years reading everything my professors told me to and doing little to no of my own personal reading, so that's why I have such a backlog. This year I'll be reading through this bookshelf though, so hopefully I get through a huge chunk of them. You don't see all those titles in this database here simply because I haven't set aside the hours necessary to fill all that in. I will at some point. Probably. Maybe? Anyway, the fact that all of my different book lists, to read, on the shelf, completed, are all in Notion makes life a lot easier for me. I can really quickly move something on my to read list to on the shelf once I've purchased it, and it's just as easy to send it to my books read list once I complete it. There's no friction between these, which I love. One of the other pages on my HQ page that I use a lot is this one for my YouTube channel. I have a lot of video ideas in there that I don't want to share with you quite yet though, so I'm not going to be showing you this today. I'll put a link in the description to the template I'm using to organize all that information though. It's one that I grabbed from a YouTuber here whose name is Thomas Frank, and it's definitely helping me keep my videos in line. My other most used pages are my capsule wardrobe and wishlist pages in my financial section and my personal study notes and to watch pages in my long-term section.
My capsule wardrobe and wishlist pages have the same basic format. They're both databases with tags and images. I use the wardrobe one to track the things that I'd like to buy for my own wardrobe, whether it's a specific item I want or a general idea, like I want black running shorts with pockets. The wishlist page captures things like home decor, gift ideas for my friends and family, and apps on the App Store that I haven't bought yet because a $7 price tag seemed unfair. The idea for these two databases is that whenever there's something I see that I want to buy, I put it on the appropriate list. I'll fill out all the relevant information for it, price, type of item, link, etc., and then I wait. If I find myself thinking about it for at least two weeks, even without scrolling through this database here, then I can start budgeting for it. The wishlist database is also really useful because I always have gift ideas for my loved ones, and they also make shopping sales pretty easy. I already know exactly what I want from certain brands, so when they announce a sale, I am armed and ready. The personal study notes page looks a bit different from the other ones I've shown you so far. It's in this gallery setup where you have little cards that show your information. I actually have a gallery view set up for my books read list, which I thought would be fun because then it looks like a bookshelf of what I read. For my personal study notes page though, this setup reminds me of individual file folders that I can click into for my notes on that subject. For instance, I did some training on this software for work, and now I have notes in case I need to troubleshoot anything. I also took a LinkedIn learning class on Excel, and all of my notes are stored in here along with screen captures. Keeping my notes like this has already been useful to me as I work with Excel. Finally, another database. This one is my to-watch list, since I get recommendations for shows and movies pretty frequently, and I don't want to just forget about them. I've pulled in IMDb information for each of these movies, and then I also have them sorted by whether I think my husband would be interested in watching them with me. This is one database where I truly do use the filter capability. I can filter down this huge list into movies to watch without my husband and French, because maybe I'm using my non-productive time on a plane to watch a movie by myself, but I don't want nosy plane neighbors reading my subtitles. Then I'll be left with a much more manageable list of options, and I can click into each one and read the short description to see which one sounds good to me at that time. As an added bonus, once I get off the plane having watched that movie, I get to check the box next to it, which still feels pretty good. That counts as productivity, right? Okay, I am pretty sure I've talked your ear off about Notion at this point. On the off chance you're an organization nerd like me who loves content like this, then please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next videos. I'll be doing a deep dive into all my Notion pages in the near future, along with how Notion fits into my overall planning system. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Thank you.